。好，接下来我们欢迎 King 跟 Brian。Government Zero Taiwan Summit 2020. Today, uh, we are Liberal Research Community. Uh, my name is Brian, and this is Kim Cheng. This is Kim yeah. Cheng. I'm, uh, I will speak in English because my Mandarin is not very fluent, but uh, that's that's yeah, To be nice, and I could speak in <laughs> yes. Uh, Mandarin. Yes, yeah. yes. So, um, our we, uh, Liberal Research Community uh, will uh, will talk about how to. Uh, uh, we, we talk about the experience that uh, we have had in the past few years on how to conduct independent policy research uh, in Hong Kong. We are, pro we are using a, a, a quite a unique approach in, in engaging this uh, civil society to do participatory and collaborative research in Hong Kong. So um, it's our honor to, to be here today to, to share with all of you about the uh, our experience and also we are looking forward to learn a lot of things from all the participants of the summit. So um, let's start. Um, uh, we first talk about ourselves um, for, for, for friends in Taiwan that might not have some background information about our, our, our um, organization. We are a registered uh, NGO in Hong Kong. We have uh, ourselves, re ourselves registered in 2014, so uh, that's been quite a number of years. And uh, our aim, um, our, the organization, the aim is to undertake independent policy research with the development of Hong Kong in mind. And uh, we are using a quite uh, a unique approach in our research. Um, um, in which we means uh, we are doing policy research by locals and for locals. And that means we are using uh, the resources in the community. We are using the people, volunteers, and also um, um, from uh, also the professionals and uh, all, all the people who are concerned about the issues in Hong Kong to do policy research about Hong Kong together. S together. Together, so uh, we'll explain a bit more uh, in, the, in the coming few slides, and uh, we are adopting a, a quite a different approach compared with uh, some traditional think tanks in Hong Kong. We call ourselves think tanks because we do policy research, but uh, we are we are more likely to do some collaborative research, we in which we believe everyone can be a researcher. You you don't have to study a lot about research methodologies in universities in order to do a research, a researcher, in order to be a researcher. We, uh, we believe we, uh, by, by using a, some engagement methods that everyone can be a researcher. And um, we also believe um, uh, in order to do this, we have to achieve research independence. And how to do that, it is, uh, uh, how, to, how to achieve that independence uh, we have to underpin this by financial independence, and we will talk about how we manage to survive uh, by by expanding our financial resources uh, in the coming few slides. Um, so, who are doing these policy research in Hong Kong? Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the 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 scene of think tanks in Hong Kong is quite dominated by pro-government think tanks. Uh, they, they, of course, they do a lot of policy research outside the government, but they generally are toting the government line or supporting government policy directions. They have a lot of funding because some of them even take government's research projects. So some people might question their in, uh, independence uh, when they are doing these research. Are they talking for the government? Are they talking? Are they supporting the government because they receive the funding? So there are some questions about the independence of those. Uh, think tanks in Hong Kong. So therefore, in the past few years, we, we find we, we are of the opinion that they are, uh, there is a lack of timely, critical, interventive, social, socially relevant policy research on local issues. So we think that we need more policy research for the community uh, to solve the, the, um, the pressing social issues. So this is how liberal research community uh, Style itself, and in the past few years, we are uh, we gradually we are gradually growing in uh, the number of researchers and also the size of our community. And so, so 
is our research outcome. So um, uh, all of you can go to uh, visit our website to see uh, the, the research outcome because um, they're all out there, but I would briefly talk about uh, these in numbers. Uh, like in the past few years, we have published um, uh, eight full research reports, uh, four published books, uh, on mainly on housing, land, agriculture, property taxation. These are some salient uh, uh, social issues in Hong Kong that uh, forms uh, quite a, a major part of the uh, uh, contentious social issues in Hong Kong. That most of these issues are, are, are causing a lot of um, social inequalities in Hong Kong. And that's why it also fueled the political uh, uh, sentiment and also the uh, partly uh, uh, the, the cause of the, of, of the protest last year. And we, 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 we are not limiting ourselves to these uh, four uh, areas, but uh, in, in recent years, because we, we, we also believe there are uh, even more um, policy areas that we need to explore, like uh, open government research, in which Government Zero Taiwan is also very concerned about, and we are also developing some archival research to look into the uh, declassified government documents that uh, would assist uh, our other uh, study areas. Um, apart from doing some um, uh, research reports like uh, all other traditional um, uh, think tanks would do, we are also um, uh, deploying some of our resources and developing uh, uh, a daily response to, to to developing issues based on research because every day in Hong Kong there are a lot of bad news there are there are some bad policies coming up from the government and usually they are serving some uh, we believe they are serving some particular vested interest so it is very important to generate knowledge and also general narrative to respond to these um, incidents. Otherwise, the, the, the pro-government uh, think tanks that I've just talked about would dominate the discussion, the past discussion, because they have a very close connection uh, with the media in Hong Kong. We, it is by, by resources, by resource, if we talk about resources, they have a lot of resources, so they can dominate the, the propaganda and also, it, is, it poses a lot of difficulties for, for those um, um, people in the civil society if they have a different opinion. So we are using different kind of methods uh, to, to, to respond to these issues based on our research and respond to these topics quickly, even within a day, in order to, to, to generate some voices uh, that would provide another angle to the same policy issues. So we, we do, do this on Facebook, we do this on uh, Instagram, and also recently we are starting to do some multimedia thing like podcast that would disseminate our message in a more uh, informal way. So um, we also have some exposure uh, um, about our research outcomes in November 2020 alone. We have 14 published articles and also we have uh, uh, me 13 times of media exposure responding to various policy issues. So how to make it happen? Um, Liberal Research Committee is a very small group of people. We only have uh, six full-time researchers. So uh, we cannot do everything by ourselves. So we we have adopted quite a different approach in doing our research because traditional think tanks might employ uh, several uh, full-time researchers to do research only and they, they will produce a report by themselves. So, but, but we believe that the power comes from people. So we very much depend on, um, on the people other than the full-time researchers, like our members, like our volunteers. We invite uh, or, or recruit, recruit uh, members and volunteers from 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 community uh, who believe this kind of collaborative research is is uh, is worthwhile. Uh, right now, we we have thirty members from different professions, uh, like the architects, surveyors, activists, social workers, who would 
have valuable inputs who who would give valuable inputs to our community uh, because we are not familiar with every uh, um, every social issues. And more importantly, there are volunteers who will participate in our research activities. Uh, right now, we are successfully uh, recruited over 100 volunteers and we're still recruiting. And collaborative research is extremely important is because we would um, we believe everyone can be a researcher, uh, as I've said before. Um, you don't have to be a doctor or an a, a MPhil graduate in order to do research. Everyone can be a researcher. So we, um, and we have tried this uh, through, um, through some training and also some engagement activities. And, and, and uh, we have uh, invited our volunteers to join our research process, in which I would talk about this in a few minutes. So gradually, they, they, they would become researchers uh, in the future, we believe. So we are, uh, this is a, 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 a very overview, a general overview of our collaborative research cycle. So for, first of all, um, the full-time researchers would, uh, would determine which policy problem is important to discuss, like um, housing issues, like a particular developing issues. The first phase of our collaborative research cycle is conception. We conceive the policy problem, setting the research scope, decide which topic to, we would proceed with. So after we have the uh, policy problem that is going to be researched, uh, we have to think how, how to do that. How is it researchable? Because some problem might not be researchable simply because you don't have the method, a viable method. So you have to study this area first. You have to do literature review. You have, to you have to design the methodology to answer this research question. And whether this methodology is viable, whether data is collectible, whether this data is of a good quality that could answer the research question. So that is very important. So if these, if these are OK, then we proceed to phase three. Uh, that, that is trial one, we check whether the data collection method is reliable, uh, and if not, we will adjust the methodology. Um, after these phases, that, um, we move to the, uh, the most important part, that is the collaboration part. We invite volunteers um, to, to use our methodology to, to, to generate the data we need. We arrange briefings, workshops, and compile, they, they can compile the data using the standardized methodology. And after it, we, uh, we invite them, as if they're interested, they can, they can proceed to the next stage of collaboration 2.0. They can do data verification, they can write our report and, 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 and help out with our publication. So these, we believe that uh, without, uh, there, there is a clear division of work between the full-time researchers, which we call research creator with generate projects and design methodology that everyone, um, even without prior research uh, and, uh, experience, could participate in this kind of data comp uh, compilation and verification. But uh, in recent years, there are increasing risk of doing this kind of um, collaborative research or simply what, uh, when you're checking uh, checking your research with when you use government data. Because recently there have been a, a case of, of arrest of a journal, journalist uh, when she used some government data in a way that government doesn't like. So um, it has posed a, a quite some uncertainty for, for the civil society and also the think tanks and also liberal research community about whether it is still safe to use these government information to do research, public policy research, and to respond to the government policies and also engage in policy dialogue. So we, this is getting more risky, I think. So um, 
about capacity building, because we believe that grooming new researchers are very important. Uh, we have been doing workshops and also uh, um, and of different kinds of uh, research skills that we believe grooming a uh, researchers uh, for the community, not just for us, for Hong Kong, is very important because we believe policy discussion is very important. So we survive ourselves by doing crowdfunding. Uh, we believe that in, only through this way um, we can uh, uh, source the funding from a di uh, from diverse source that we do not need to depend on single um, uh, financial source, which would dominate our research direction. So we have been uh, doing this crowdfunding uh, from time to time to diversify our, uh, our financial sources. So. Uh, it, we have been doing quite okay, but uh, you know, recent, recently the, the economy is going down, and also there are also increasing risk of doing crowdfunding in Hong Kong. But anyway, we ha we still under these political circumstances, we still have to do this because we believe research can be collaborative, research can be independent, and research for the community is the thing that we should do. So. Um, uh, I'm not sure whether Kim Cheng has a bit, uh, some wrap up about mm. uh, our mode of operation and yeah, there's some. Yeah, thank things. you, Brian, because uh, we have uh, already introduced uh, what we do and uh, the current, uh, especially the political circumstances. Eh, I'm supposed to say. Yeah, you can speak Chinese. I'm sorry. Ah, is. Is. Ah, actually, my last addition is. 我们我猜应该有很多朋友有兴趣，就是了解，就是本土研究社这一类型的啊、呃、民间团体或者民间研究工作者在香港现在处境，或者是啊、呃、这这个民间研究在香港可以怎么样呃延续下去，或者是面面对怎么样的呃危机那那种问题，所以其实啊啊、呃呃、我最后就会呃简单的。呃，说一下呃，关于呃这个方面，就是呃，比方说刚刚 Brian 也会谈到一些部分，就是比方说众筹或是财政的来源方面，其实已经开始有一些呃规范。其实现在的状态在香港是没有一个团体是可以说自己是一百八的安全的，对，这个是现在的状态。另外一个方面就是，其实啊，我们民间研究空间，其实一直以来我们坚持坚持的方啊方向就是，其实我们不是要做我们的研究的成果是给政府看，因为其实最重要社会像能够推动这个议题或是事情的，都是都是其实是民间的力量，就是市民可以有一种。啊，共识的理解，就呃，就呃，在某一些某一些领域，这个才是那个动力的来源。所以，其实对于我们来说，一直以来，政府理不理你，不是我们最主要的关注点。但是现在，其实有一个啊、呃、新的情况发生，就是关于比方说国安法，或是啊、呃、在之前的一些政府的做法，或是。慢慢将一些呃现有或是既有的条例或是法律扩大它的诠释空间，让其实一些呃一直以来我们做很多民间研究的时候会用到的一些工具啊，或是做的方法，啊，它也有潜在的风险。现在会变成这样子，刚刚也有提到一个我们叫呃 land search 或是 company search 那种。我们在香港叫扯叉的，我不知道说说是不是，在在台湾在在另外一个，就是要查一些呃登记查询，登记登记查询，对，就是这个方面也是已经出现了这个 criminalization， 就是刑事化，就是说你是呃不符合本身原来的用途，比方说查一个车牌啊，啊或是。查一些呃，我们在建筑的一些图的
建筑图的方面，其实已经有这一个部分的出现。所以其实对于呃民间研究，尤其是我们要做很多关于土地或者房屋研究，在香港的状态，其实的空间呃有这一方面的影响，或者是你会看到的影响，或是你的成本或者代代价是呃高了很多。对，也有一些。朋友是啊、呃，会觉得是已经风险已经太大，也影响到他们的参与。对，这个其实现在的香港的处境是这样子。最后就是我们的呃，怎么想这个问题？就是其实我们觉得现在是你的那些危机，危机是避无可避的。对，就是你其实不能够防止。他用任何在香港不同的法律去呃搞你的一个状态，因为香港的那个就是法治已经变成了一个，在香港这些普遍来说，大家已经觉得是笑话，对，所以就啊啊，反正就是这样的话，其实你也没有可以避免或是要去。就是审自自己审查自己的理由了、啊嗯，对，就是香香香港现在的状况是这样。对，我相信这个可能在几十年前台湾也有这些，这个这个这个经验吧、啊，就是我们香港人没有经历过，所以我们很期待台湾的朋友们可以跟我们分享一下如何在这个处境下生存。对对,对，因为时间比较。呃，我们差不多半个小时了，所以我那么就先说到这里<笑>好，谢谢你。呃，我们谢谢 Brian 和 King 的分享。